Hi, everyone, and welcome to tonight's presentation. Tonight, we are joined by Montgomery Countryside Alliance board member and local historian, Kenny Scholes. Tonight, he will be bringing us the latest presentation in his Historic Ag Reserve Properties series. Please remain muted during the presentation. As always, there will be an opportunity at the end to unmute for Q&A. If you enjoyed tonight's presentation, please make sure to check out our website and register to join us again next week. Without further ado, Kenny, take it away. All right, thanks so much, Dottie. Um, thanks everybody for, for being here. I know it's kind of tough this time of year with uh, vacations and summer wrapping up and everything. And so appreciate your attendance. Um, I, so I, I think it's all people that are familiar to me, it looks like on the chats, but if for whatever reason you haven't been with me before, um, I'm Kenny, I live here in town, um, grew up here in Poolsville and have been exploring different aspects of local ag reserve history, specifically around old homes uh, over the last couple of years. And tonight, um, I, I didn't have necessarily new houses that I wanted to talk about, um, but one of the, I've had a couple of just really random things that I've become fascinated with over the last couple of weeks. And a lot of times this is what happens. I pick up on some small little detail in some old picture and then it becomes some odd obsession for me for like two weeks to really look into at other old places um, and I kind of go down a rabbit hole so I'm basically going to force you all to just come with me this evening. Um, so we're going to talk about three different things that I've been just looking at and thinking about over the, the last month or so. Um, so. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about was the, um, I don't know, I guess the slow evaporation or disappearance um, of porches on some of our old homes. And I know this sounds like a really um, mundane and boring topic, but it's what, what sparked it for me was a couple of weeks ago, um, somebody, Valerie Dickerson actually gave me, uh, or let me look at this picture. And this picture is really, really interesting for a couple of reasons, at least to me. Um, the first is this is Annington. This is the home out by White's Ferry, um, built in 1813, I believe. And it played a very prominent role um, during the Civil War. It's, you know, it's one of the, I think, most grand old federal style homes here um, in this part of, of the Ag Reserve. Uh, and most interesting to me is that this picture was supposedly taken in 1860, which if true, and I have no reason to think that that's not true, would make this the oldest existing picture that I actually know of, of an old home here in the Ag Reserve. Maybe there's something else floating around out there, but I don't think I've seen any others. I've seen you know, a couple of pictures, obviously, from during the Civil War uh, around Poolsville, which includes some homes. Um, but this would be kind of the, this would predate even the Civil War. Um, so, so that was very interesting to me that this exists. And then the other thing that's kind of fascinating I notice is, you know, obviously the, the picture is a little bit um, worn in some areas, but um, the quality is pretty good given how old it is. But the big thing that stood out to me was that front porch that's there, which is, is pretty clear in the picture. Um, and, and it was kind of interesting to me because when we look at the front of Annington today, and, and I'm, I've shown this picture to you all before, but we can see it's that very symmetrical federal style, right? And there's, it's, it's very faint, but we see this a lot on old homes. If you look really, really closely in that main block, um, kind of between the first floor and second floor windows, you can actually kind of see where that porch roof line used to be. And this happens a lot. I think it's a result of years of water and sunlight on the bricks and, 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 the, and some bricks not getting it as a result of having, you know, the roof of the porch on there. Um, but so, so just a really fascinating picture. And it got me starting to think like, yeah, I feel like when I look at a bunch of the older homes, homes that we've talked about before, um, a lot of those porches are no longer there on the front of the houses. And, and why is that, right? Um, when we look at, here's East Oaks. This is East Oaks built in uh, 1824, I believe, 
by the Young family. Henry Young built this home. Another one of the really prominent um, old, old homes here in this part of the Ag Reserve, um, now under new, new ownership in the last um, couple of, of months, uh, where they're running some, some farm and um, selling produce out of there, which is kind of exciting. But again, we can see um, this, this front porch here on the home. And you can also see if you kind of look in the foreground there, almost like this terraced elevation um, taking place leading up to the front door. And again, when we look at kind of how the home looks today, we've largely, I, I don't know, I guess minimized that front porch. Uh, and, and then obviously there's, there's been some, um, you know, landscaping done with the brick around those, um, those little terraces leading up to the front door. Um, so, so again, another situation where the porch was there and is no longer. And then at Inverness, and, and I think, I kind of think of Inverness, which was built in 1818, Annington and East Oaks as kind of a, a, a tri like a triple. They kind of go together. Um, and that's largely because we're pretty certain they were all built by the same person, Charles Wilson. And so there's a lot of similarities in these, in these homes. But again, um, we see here this picture taken uh, as part of the, um, the historic American building survey as part of the New Deal in the 1930s. And you can see that that front porch, I've shown you before pictures of this front porch with uh, members of the White family sitting out front there. Um, and we, when we look at it today, it's, you know, it, it has kind of that almost decorative um, roofing over the front door, but that long porch is gone. Um, so just kind of an interesting observation and kind of something that I've been looking at and thinking about. The other interesting thing about this picture here is if you look on the left, I'll show this one. If you look um, at the very bottom of the screen, kind of towards the left, towards the base of that tree, you can see what looks like stone blocks. And what that actually is, and it's still there today, is the mounting blocks um, to get on your horse. Uh, so that's kind of cool that that has withstood the test of time and is, is very much still there in the front yard. Here is uh, the Joseph White House. This is um, out off of Buck Lodge Road. And Joseph White built this home um, also in the 1820s. Uh, you can see here, this, this picture is more recent. This is from the 70s, but you can see the pretty grand front porch on it. And today, this is how this one looks. Um, we've talked about this one before. It, uh, you know, it, it clearly, it's not currently being lived in. Um, it's owned by the county and they have um, done some work to strengthen the the foundation and kind of the in, internal structure so it's not going to fall down but but it needs a lot of work but at some point in i believe in the 1980s um, that that front porch came down it was pulled down I, I don't know if it just fell into disrepair like a lot of the rest of the house and you know they couldn't save that part of it so it was it was safer just to bring down but you can see it gone there what's kind of fascinating is if you ever get the chance to go out to this home. It's out by um, uh, the, the Rickman farm out there, which is public. The front stairs leading up to the front porch are still there. So if, if you go to the top of these stairs, you have like a 10 foot chasm between you and that front door. Um, so actually getting up to that front door is, is quite a challenge at this point in time. And again, you can see, if you look at the front of the house, kind of that, that line of where the, the roofing of that front porch used to be. And then this is out uh, on Edwards or out towards Edwards Ferry uh, on West Philly Road. This is um, Stony Castle, another another home built by the, the White family in the early to 1820s, 1830s time frame. This was where uh, Elijah White, who ended up having a lot of uh, Civil War fame, I guess you could say, um, from from Poolsville at least, um, grew up and was raised. This picture here is, is always an interesting one to me, and I'm sure some, some of you have seen it, but um, it was taken again as part of that historic uh, American building survey in the, um, in the 1930s. And unfortunately, I don't have a picture to 
necessarily prove to you definitively that there was a porch on this home. However, if you look at kind of the holes across the kind of the midpoint of the house, in addition to you can kind of see towards the side some lines of where there was likely some some water wearing on on the front of the stones. Um, I'm fairly confident there was some kind of porch here. Additionally, the other kind of giveaway to me would be that in the center on the second floor, there appears to be a door. So I would assume that when they built this house, they wouldn't build a door to nowhere. Uh, so I think it must have been some kind of front porch that, um, you know, individuals could walk out on. Uh, and then, as you see today, this is, you know, after they completed these columns, um, it's not my favorite architectural detail in, in the Ag Reserve. I'm not sure it's necessarily um, historically, you know, aligned with the way the home looked when it was first built, but um, but it's been there since, yeah, since, since the 1930s when they, this day when they were putting those columns up. So this, this here is the Nathan Dickerson Pool House. It was built in 1870. This is another one um, out towards uh, Edwards Ferry. And I, I'm sure you've, I know I've shown this picture before, but I just, I love this picture because of the amount of ornate detail put on this, this home. Um, I, my kids refer to it as the gingerbread house just from this picture. It still kind of looks like that, but it really looks like it here. Um, and you can see the pretty extensive front porch in addition to all of the other very gothic details on, on the roof and the support structures between the roof lines, which is really, really unique. You can see the water tower there over to the, to the far side of the house. Um, and then there were some, some interesting design choices um, in the 1970s uh, when, when they um, you know, painted the home um, and, and clearly that front porch is unfortunately long gone at this point. Um, there's also pictures I think from the 60s where there was a different kind of front porch put on here that was very modern looking. It was a kind of an odd structure and so that they got rid of that. Um, but the home, as you see it on the right, is, is largely how it looks today. However, it's it's painted yellow. Um, but if you're driving down towards Edwards Ferry, um, you'll you'll go right past it. You got to kind of look back through the trees to, to see it, but it but it's not that far off the road. Absolutely beautiful home. And then I've talked about this one a lot of times, but this is um, Chiswell's inheritance. This is you know the home just outside of town as you're heading out towards Bellsville. Um, built in 1796 by um, Chiswell family. And what we're looking at here is actually the back of the home. What's interesting is that in, at least in the 1930s, this home had both a front porch and a back porch. We're looking at the back porch here, um, but it was uh, taken down um, at, at some point, I think in the seventies, maybe. Again, we can see kind of um, on the, on the back of that home, you can see that that roof line. So it's always kind of interesting. So whenever you're looking at old homes now, hopefully you'll um, look for that little markings on the bricks to see kind of what used to be there. Uh, and it's it's just kind of interesting to me how these homes and the changes through time, you know, there's always these little details that are left behind um, to kind of show what the structure used to look like. The other interesting feature on this one, and I, and I think I've talked about it before, but you can't see it in this picture, but on the other side of the house, there are two windows that were bricked over very soon after the home was built. And as the story goes, um, Joseph White, after completing the home, you know, within the first or second winter, his wife basically came to him and was like, you need to brick up those windows because it's on the northern side of the house and the wind is just blowing straight through them and freezing us to death. And so he <laughs> went in and, and bricked them up and you can still see kind of the markings of where those windows were, right? So it's just kind of those little stories that come out from these details um, on the exteriors. So like what, what is happening here? Like why, why do I think um, there aren't front porches? I don't know the complete answer. My guess is that it has a lot to do with the fact that we have air conditioning now and that, you know, um, in the 1800s and early 1900s, uh, in many cases uh, in the summer, it was a lot cooler to actually sit out on your front porch. Um, 
than to to be inside of your home. And so I think as a result, there is much more time spent out on on front porches, um, either just spending time with family, doing whatever, or um, or sleeping. Um, but I, I want to make a call to all old homeowners that if you used to have a porch, let's put it back on there because I think they look good. And um, who doesn't like spending time on a porch, right? Okay. So if that wasn't interesting enough for you, let's talk about staircases. Uh, so um, this came up. So this, um, I, th this is not going to shock anybody, but I spent a lot of time on Zillow looking for old houses that are for sale, not because I'll probably buy one, but just because I like looking at the pictures. So I would love to tell you that this staircase exists here in the Ag Reserve, but it does not. This is actually from Vicksburg, Mississippi. There is a home down there built in the 1830s that is currently for sale. If anybody wants to buy it, I am happy to go in with you on it because this staircase is worth the price of the home alone. I think it's, I think it's the most beautiful staircase in America. I know that's a bold statement, but um, it's absolutely phenomenal. So I saw this and it got me thinking about some of the staircases that we have here in the Ag Reserve um, and thinking like, what are some of the ones that I find most interesting and kind of just, you know, most, most um, visually appealing. Now, this staircase is essentially an impossible act to follow. So nothing is going to look quite like this because this is truly amazing. Um, but there are a number of really um, beautiful old staircases um, here in the Ag Reserve, which oddly enough is one of my favorite features on an old home. This is from East Oaks. Um, this is the staircase, so original from the 1820s. And, um, you know, I, I love the, the railing here. I mean, it, it's, you know, when you can have wood that feels like glass just from hundreds of years of, of hands going over them, I always think that's kind of a cool feature. Um, pretty simple in design, but, but still really beautiful. When we look at some of the um, some of the homes from kind of the later half of the 1800s, um, especially as we get into towards the Victorian era, era, what we start to see is a little bit more design work on um, the the posts and 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 the railings. Um, so these two um, staircases on the left is from Lindenwood Farm. Um, and on the right is um, the Evans House, which is the big white house there, right kind of towards the center of town. Um, you can see really, really similar layouts here, very similar design. Um, so much so that a lot of times when I go into these old homes, I see a lot of posts like this that are actually identical to others I've seen. And I think, you know, as I've said before, I think what was happening was um, there were certain craftsmen that were building, you know, different features of homes like this and kind of going around and selling them to a bunch of different homes. And so as a result, what we start to see are similar features showing up in different homes, even in some cases when they're from different eras. You can see again, um, this is the uh, Dr. Thomas Wooten home. So this is that big old white home from the 1860s right next to the high school. Um, I'm sure that they've had plenty of problems with, with parking uh, in their driveway, uh, but this, is, this was for sale, I don't know, maybe six to 12 months ago. Um, and um, this, is, this is the staircase inside that home. And if you look at kind of the post and, and the staring, stairs going up from the base, really, really similar to what we see here. Um, although the landing here going up to the second floor is a little bit more narrow um, and a little, bit, a little bit different from what we see at Lindenwood and, and the Evans home. When we look at some of the um, more grand federal style homes, what we see is kind of more of this squared off look with our main staircases. So on the left is Inverness. Again, that was one of the ones I showed earlier with the, with the front porch um, built in 1818. So this is a picture from the 1950s, I believe. Um, and you can see that fairly symmetric, you know, um, staircase going up, turning, and then going up again to the second floor. On the right is Annington, that first house I showed you. It's 
very, very similar in nature to what we see at Inverness. And again, this is not a surprise to us because these two homes were likely built by the same person or at least had the same person design both homes. For my money, uh, the best staircase in the Ag Reserve is um, at the Thomas Pool House, which was the Blue Hearth right there in the, in the dead center of town. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's, a, well, not unfortunately, but it's a private residence now, so you can't go in and check it out like you could when you could go um, to the Blue Hearth. Uh, but you can see from these pictures, which are really old and really grainy, so I apologize for that, but um, you can see just kind of how grand it is, especially looking down from the top. The only the, there's another home in in Rockville um, where Montgomery History operates out of um, the I think it's the Beale Dawson House, which is almost identical. So much so that it's it's likely again a, a case of the same builder designing it, um, but it has the, the very similar features here. Um, but just an absolutely beautiful staircase. And then I showed you the exterior of the Joseph White home a minute ago that is, um, you know, obviously not being lived in, but this is the interior. So again, this is um, an absolutely beautiful home of um, federal design, and you can really see that here. And, and obviously it's uh, in disrepair, but but you can see kind of the the really strong bones um, of this staircase. And this is a cool one. It goes, it's another one that rises all the way up to the attic. Um, so a, a really, really cool little feature of the home. I'm hoping that somebody ends up moving in and restoring this place. Um, and then two others here. So on, on the left is the staircase at Monte Video, which um, was built in the 1820s. What I think is interesting about this one is in most old homes, what we have is when you, you know, open that front door, you're met with that foyer that goes straight to the back of the house, kind of like what we see here on the right at Rocklands. Um, and when you get to the back of the house, there's typically a door that goes out to the back uh, and you have that staircase there. That's what we, we've seen. That's what we see here. You can, the door is right there underneath that landing. Um, you can see it here uh, in in the Inverness picture on the on the left, that's the door in the back there, um, and you can see it. It's well, you can't really see it, but it's it's here in both cases in Lindenwood and the Evans home. But what's fascinating about um, Monte Video is that the staircase is actually pushed against the rear wall. It's it's um, perpendicular to the front foyer. It's not parallel with it, uh, and so that's kind of a just an interesting detail that is pretty unique to this home. Um, this, this was the home built by the Peter family of immense wealth. Um, and they were styling this after Tudor place, which is a, a home in Georgetown. I haven't actually been there, but my suspicion would be that there's some similar type of stairway work, um, in that home as well, that they were likely, um, kind of copying here when they built this place. And then on the right, um, is, is Rocklands where I'm sure you've all been before. And, and Rocklands, if you remember from the outside, is very Italianate in architecture. And so when we see the kind of that Italianate feature from the late 1800s, a lot of times what we see on the interior, especially with the staircases, is a lot of curves. Um, and, and you can kind of see the difference from the federal style, which is very blocky, just like the exterior, to on the right here with Rocklands, that landing is kind of curving upward and it curves again up onto the second floor. So just kind of like a very minor feature, but it's just an interesting thing that you'll, you might notice as you go into different old homes. It just not only does that exterior architecture um, kind of show itself off out there, but you can see that kind of play itself again inside, especially on, on some of the stairwells. Okay. And then finally, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, and I saw that Jim is on here, so that's great because he gave me a good assist on this, um, is this picture that, it might have even been Jim that sent me this picture years back, but this picture of this band. And this is uh, obviously an old picture. This is from the Civil War. Um, and this is the band of the 20th uh, Massachusetts Infantry. They took this picture um, in the fall of 1861 at Camp Benton, which is 
just outside of Poolsville as you're heading towards Edwards Ferry. Um, Camp, ben Camp Benton was, was occupied by a couple of different units at, at, at at least one or two different occasions throughout the war. Um, we don't have too many pictures from that time. There are some sketches and some drawings, and I'll show you a really famous painting of it here in a second. Um, but I just, I mean, the detail in this picture is just, I think, really, really cool. But what's fascinating is if we look far in the background, there's clearly a home back there that was on the edge of the camp. And so, um, you know, given that we know where the location um, of the camp was, we can figure out pretty precisely um, where the picture was taken. So full credit on this one to Jim Poole. He's the one that sent in this picture um, to the Pools Will Now and Then uh, group. He got access to go out to the field to kind of try to take a, the picture from the vantage point of, of where the, the previous picture was shot. And what we have up there on, on the upper right there, kind of up on the hill, is the Williams family farm. So the Williams farm um, was built clearly before the Civil War, um, but actually the structure that we see here uh, supposedly burned down or was just in such a bad shape um, after the Civil War that it was torn down. And then um, the home that you see in this picture was, was then built on that same location. But apparently the smokehouse, the um, kind of log smokehouse that was here, and you can kind of see it kind of sitting in front of the old home here, um, it, it survived through that process and is still there today. Um, so again, so this generally speaking, and it's not scientific, but is kind of somewhere that in here is where that unit was standing when this picture was taken, looking out in this direction. This is that Williams family farm up here um, that you can see off in the distance. Um, this is what the Williams family farm looks like today. This structure, this home is post-Civil War um, in, I think, in the 1860s or 70s based on the design, um, but again, built on top of where the, the previous uh, home was. And this is that log smokehouse that I mentioned that had allegedly been, been there when that picture was taken, was in that picture, um, and still survives today. And what's fascinating is we have, I, many of you have probably seen this painting before, but this is a painting by Winslow Homer, who was a very, very famous painter um, in the mid 1800s, painted a, a number of significant Civil War related paintings in addition to many others. Um, but this was his painting of, of officers talking to each other at Camp Benton in Poolsville. And allegedly, and I, I, I suppose there's no way to prove this, but allegedly this log house you see in the background is, um, sorry, is this. Um, now, is it possible that that is something different? Yes, of course. I mean, we know that when Civil War units came into camp, especially into the winter, they would build structures that were more permanent than, than tents in some cases. Um, and so it's possible that it's, it's something different. But I think if you look at kind of the way that the elevation is sloping, and we go back and look at the picture that Jim gives us, um, the log house is kind of up in here somewhere. So it, 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 I think it makes sense. And even if it doesn't, it's a hell of a good story. So I'm going to stick with it. But, um, but yeah, so it's kind of interesting that this little log smokehouse potentially ends up in um, a painting from a really famous painter. I think, you know, these paintings are hanging in national galleries and um, ac across the country. Um, so yeah, kind of an interesting little tie in from, from um, Poolsville and Civil War history there. Okay, with that, I think that was fairly short, but with that, I will open it up if anybody has any questions about any of that or wants to look at any more of those things. Feel free to unmute or put your questions in the chat at this time. Kenny, I find it really kind of sad that people took porches off. Um, no. <laughs> because I mean, I have a very tiny little overhang porch and I just think it's a great place to 
you know, for to get together with family. I understand, like at first I thought, oh, well, you know, maybe people aren't hanging out as much on their porches because they're busy, you know, busier. So that it was an added thing to care for. But I think the air conditioning thing makes sense. But yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, I I take notice of it too, just even when I'm driving around, like I don't normally see people hanging out on their front porches and there could be a lot of reasons for that but um but yeah i i um I, i'm ready to kind of start a campaign where everybody spends the day on their porch at some point here in the in, in the fall but <laughs> we, we actually do it quite often but the bushes right in front are a little high so you if, uh, well, if you didn't know i mean we can kind of see over them but if you didn't know but right. yeah I really enjoy that. And it's kind of a shame that those older homes, because that was such a beautiful part of the homes were the yeah, yeah. porches that they had. Yep. Yeah. Kenny, you don't know anything about the first um, staircase that you put up, do you? Because that looked like an engineering marvel. Oh, the um, yeah, let's let's admire that again. Um it, it is so so this is um this home it, so it's a very significant home um it's for sale i think it's like 650 which i'm not saying is in, is not cheap but i mean i feel like this staircase alone is worth that uh, but this home was built in 1835 in vicksburg which those of you that know a lot about the civil war know that was a very significant um strategic point um, played a very significant role in the war. And when Vicksburg was actually under attack um, from uh, the Union, um, a, there was a woman who actually lived in this home who wrote and re kind of kept account in her diary of the siege of Vicksburg. Um, and she actually lived in this home. And so she, you know, that, that, that book has kind of been out there and it's been something that a lot of people, when they're studying the Battle of Vicksburg, um, take a look at. So it, it, it ties actually into a lot of fairly significant history, but um, yeah, I, it's hard to wrap your head around somebody um, building this in 1835, just because some of the, like, it seems to defy gravity. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I, uh, I, I literally was sending this to my wife and trying to figure out some justification for why we would move to Mississippi, but she, um, she, the, the staircase was not a strong enough selling point for her. So I'm gonna have to figure out something else. <laughs> yeah, so yes, yeah, Matt. So Matt mentions Natchez, Mississippi. That's another really cool place with a ton of just interesting old, you know, talking like deep South old homes that are fascinating. Um, and Courtney, this, so this one, I think it's 650 if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, um, yeah, there's a, there's a website. It's, um, I'll type it in the chat. It's, if you look up old house dreams, um, that is a site that I spend far too much time on, but basically they just scour like the country for new old homes that are being listed and then they just kind of post about them it's just, so it's just a good place to to see really interesting old places and think about you know or pretend for a moment like you might actually buy one in the middle of nowhere but um but yeah there are some some beautiful ones out there but yeah this one i can't believe this one sat empty for a number of years which is crazy to me but um but yeah i saw another question in the chat that asks if any of these homes will be on your next historic houses tour. Yeah. And I guess I'll add on my own question to that, which is, will you be having another one of those soon? Yeah. I want to, um, I think we will. Um, yes, it's just this summer has been so busy, but I think we are getting back to that point where the weather is gonna be supportive and the COVID conditions are hopefully going to be supportive enough um, that we can do that. So yeah, I, I will um, start kind of planning that maybe for late September, early October. Um, and will any of the homes um, be on the tour? I mean, obviously I don't have 
a definitive answer on that yet, but there are a couple on here that I will certainly be reaching out to the, the owners on. Um, so stay tuned. I will make sure that um, as soon as I get any details, I will push them out to the, to the group. And where should people keep an eye out for that information on your Facebook page? Yeah, so um, on my Facebook page, um, it's just historic uh, ag reserve properties. And then if you haven't checked out the websites, there's, um, so let's see. Yeah, thanks. And then, um, and if you're on Instagram, I'm posting on there too. If you just want to see pictures of old houses that are local. Just as a reminder, um, the John Poole House is going to be open two Saturdays a month for starting in September until uh, the, I think halfway through November. That's right. Yep. We've, we've been working on that to get that open. Um, especially with the COVID conditions being a little bit more conducive and just the, the foot traffic at locals there, it just makes sense. And so I'm excited that we're finally gonna get that, the doors open there and let people walk and through and check it out. You can find the dates in the Poolsville Seniors Community Activities article every Monday. Oh, nice, good. I'm glad it's there. Uh, the All Nut House down at Seneca, Behind the pool store has one yeah. of the staircases, just like we were showing with this the block. That's right. And, That's when, right. Guy, yeah. and when Guy Allnut had it on that first landing, he used to have a grandfather clock sitting there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that you're you're right. It's it's very similar to Lindenwood and, and the Evans home, that that staircase there. Um, I think that home's from 1855. Um, so around that time frame, but um yeah, that's that's another really good one that I think somebody's actually living in now, or at least leasing from the county. So that's good. Feel free to unmute if you have any more questions. I just have to say it was cool to hear more about this staircase and see it again. I saw it on your Facebook and totally agreed it's entrancing it's really really amazing <laughs> especially for the time yeah no I know I I had to I really wanted to show it here because I wasn't I, my wife eventually was like are we still talking about this staircase I'm like okay fine I'll show it to other people but um yeah it's it is absolutely beautiful yeah, I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone to build you this staircase now I agree I completely agree I yeah I totally agree it's interesting because it's just floating up at the top. I know, there. I know. It's like, it's it just hanging in the air. Well, yeah. if, you, if you look at it closely, it's not really floating. It's attached on two walls. Yeah. It, it gives you the, um, I mean, I, a lot of it is floating and it really gives you the impression that it's flying in the air, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's crazy to me that they had the ability in the 1830s to to do that um yeah. but yeah and that it's it lasted this long is yeah. really mind-boggling too i wonder if they ever had to have it rebuilt i don't know i you would think like at least those support structures in there <laughs> have been checked a few times but try coming down that in a big old hoop skirt mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. well we're, we're had, up a couple of drinks right <laughs> If you had to replace those railings now, that would run you a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, just look at the beautiful curves on those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Do we have any last questions? Well, I'd like to say I hope you all enjoyed tonight's presentation as much as I did and learned something new. If you think of any questions later, as always, you can email us at info at
And if you'd like to unmute or turn on your camera to say goodbye, now's the time. We'd like to thank Kenny for his presentation. And if you enjoyed tonight's program, please consider joining us for more upcoming events. As always, you can go to our website at poolsvilleseniors.org for all the info and registration for all of our events. And please make sure to register to join us for game day, August 23rd at Spear Hall of Poolsville Presbyterian Church. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. We're happy to go down the rabbit hole with you anytime. <laughs> good, good to know. You've got a very loyal following here. <laughs> yeah. Glad to hear it. See you. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.